Merry Christmas. Thank you to our beautiful choir for singing so amazing this evening. And last Sunday and just about every Sunday that our choir is here, it's just a, an unbelievable experience. I want to wish Shonya Pola to all those who are celebrating their name days today. If you are a, a Cristo, a Cristina, or Emmanuel, today is your name day. Shonya Pola, your name day. If you're new to our church and would like to join our parish, please fill out one of the white connection cards in the pews in front of you and hand it to either Skip or Maria Zenick, Skip Higdon, who's in the back, and Maria, who's in the choir, who are going to be our greeters tonight. And after we're done here, I invite everyone to come and break bread together next door. The parish council holds, hosts a reception for Christmas Eve every year, and I welcome you and, and invite you to come and let's break bread for a few minutes as a, a church family and wish each other a Merry Christmas on this wonderful and beautiful feast. I am so happy tonight because this, I've never seen a church this full of people on Christmas Eve night. And, if you can believe this, the church was more than half filled this morning with different people. And so at a time where many people are not going to church on Christmas, our church had record attendance today, and I'm, I'm so happy for that as the priest, as the spiritual father, that I get to greet all my, all my children, all my friends today on this Feast of Christmas. So thank you for being here, and thank you for, for sharing this beautiful liturgy. On the back of the bulletin, I printed the words to two songs. And one of those songs is the Hallelujah Chorus, which the choir sang a few moments ago. And the Hallelujah Chorus is one piece of a very, very large musical piece called The Messiah, written by George Frederick Handel several hundred years ago. The Hallelujah Chorus is the, the climactic piece of that big arrangement. And the words of the Hallelujah Chorus are actually taken from the book of Revelation, which we don't read in the Orthodox Church. But the words, they're very powerful. They're not many. The choir sang for about four minutes, the Hallelujah Chorus, and they didn't cover that many words. But the words that they covered, they were covered with great magnificence. The Lord God, omnipotent, reigns. Omnipotent means all-knowing all-powerful. These are words that we can't even really translate or comprehend in the English language. What does it mean to be omnipotent? There's nobody here that is that. There's nobody here who's ever going to be that. There's nobody out in the world whom we can ascribe that word to. Only God has that word. Omnipotent, all-knowing, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and everything in between. None of us is the Alpha and Omega. We're all temporary. We're somewhere in between the Alpha and the Omega. We weren't here at the beginning. We will probably not be here at the end. We are somewhere in the middle. Only God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. There are kings and there are rulers and there are people that we bow to and we respect, but only one, of the, one person, God, is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The, the idea of God is indescribable, uncontainable. Which brings me to the second song that is listed here. I mentioned this song on Sunday, and if you didn't go and look on YouTube and listen to this song, it's about a four minute song, it's very profound. It takes the idea of the uncontainable God and talks about the mystery, how little fingers of a baby could be the same fingers that measured the cosmos at the beginning of time. How can that be? That the Feast of Christmas is not what we get caught up with, a baby in a manger, the birth of Jesus, but rather it's heaven's light reaching down to save the world. It's the day that the uncontained, uncreated God came and dwelt among his creation as one of us. 
If you haven't listened to this song, just Google Here With Us by Joy Williams. It's about a four-minute clip on YouTube with a nice video that goes along with it that shows some scenes from the Nativity story from about 10 years ago. It's very simple, very profound, its message. This Christmas I, I have celebrated in a way that I've never celebrated a Christmas before because for those who are on the prayer team, the last 40 days I've written reflections about the scriptures of the Nativity. And in, in looking for things to write, I had to study and I discovered things that I, I never thought of before. Things jumped out at me that I never considered before. And allow me please to share a few of them with you. A couple weeks ago we had the Christmas pageant. And if you asked the kids, which role do you want in the Christmas pageant? Probably every girl would say, I want to be Mary. And every boy would say, I want to be Joseph. Those are the main characters. And when you think about Mary and Joseph and those roles that they played, who would really want those roles? Here you have a young girl who was dedicated to God and in exchange for her dedication to God, she lost her parents at a young age. And she was asked to do something incredible, to bear God's son at the tender age of 14. And she would grow up to watch him be crucified in the most heinous manner. And Joseph was an older man in Orthodox tradition. He wouldn't see his son grow up. And he would have a lot of head scratching. What am I doing with this woman who has a child that's not mine? So let's say you forget Mary and Joseph. Those roles are too hard. I'll be a shepherd. The role of the shepherd was not that great either. They were doing a census in Bethlehem and they were counting all the people except the shepherds. They were out in the countryside. They weren't even worth counting. No one at that time that was a parent said, I hope my son grows up to be a shepherd. Okay, well, forget the shepherds. How about the wise men, the three kings? That must have been a grandiose role. Well, they were asked and called to leave their country and wander for two years following a star. And after they saw the Lord God in the flesh, presumably it took them two years to get back. What would have been left of their kingdoms and their reputations and their power after a four-year absence? The thing is that all these roles, all these people, they saw God's glory. And they saw God's glory through humility and through sacrifice. They saw God's glory through humility and sacrifice. And we're still talking about them 2,000 years later. When you look at the nativity story, there are two things that jump out at me that I relate to as a, as a human being in 2015. One is the figure of Joseph. And if you see Joseph up there in the icon of the nativity, Joseph kind of sits at a distance. He sees the whole thing. He's taking it in. And he's still not sure. I'm very comforted by the figure of Joseph. Because that's me. I'm seeing the whole thing. I'm seeing a beautiful congregation. That we come year after year to celebrate this feast. I see beautiful people that I have the privilege of serving and sitting with and talking and getting to know in my, in, in my office, sometimes in the confessional, sometimes in hospitals, sometimes in homes. And I'm still trying to figure it out after 17 years of doing this. I haven't mastered it. I'm not yet one of the angels in heaven. I'm still like Joseph sitting and trying to figure it out. But I'm still there, just like you all are still here. Maybe you haven't figured it out yet, but you're still here. And that's a positive thing indeed. And the last thing that I relate to is th this verse of Scripture, Luke 2.20. It says, The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. That's probably not the verse of Scripture that jumps out at you when you read the Nativity passage. But this year when I was doing these reflections, this is the passage that jumped out most at me. Because the shepherds returned to being shepherds. They returned to their low state in life and their low pay and their low reputation and, and still nobody wanted to count them. Seeing the Christ child did not change their bottom line. It didn't change their socioeconomic status. But they were changed because they beheld God's glory. They glorified and praised God for what they had heard and seen. 
So tomorrow when you wake up and you'll, we'll all open presents and we'll all overeat tomorrow. And Saturday we'll all wake up and we'll all have a stomach ache probably. And we'll, co we'll contemplate going to the mall to return our gifts in only 36 hours. And we'll wonder, like, what, what did we do here tonight? What will be different on Saturday than what will be tonight? Not much is going to change. We're still going to have hot weather in Tampa. You'll also have to go back to work on Monday. But over time, something's got to change. Something's got to change. Because witnessing this feast year after year, sitting in the place of Joseph year after year, sitting in the place of Mary, pondering these things in our hearts, something's got to change. We've got to peel another layer away so we can come closer to glorifying and praising God for all that we've heard and seen. Mary and Joseph actually have great roles. Joseph is seeking something. And Mary is pondering what is going on. So ponder in your heart the things that you read in the scriptures. Ponder in your heart the words on this back page. How did the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords get into the body of a little baby with little baby fingers? God became like what? Became like one of us so that we can become like him. All of God's glory got concentrated into a little baby. And we have our life, our talents, our challenges, concentrated in us. But the idea is for us to go through this life and be ready to experience God's glory. And this happens because God became one of us so that we can become like him. So ponder on these things. Ponder on the stars that God put in the sky tonight. Ponder on the beautiful voices of the choir, that God made that. God gave those people here, our friends, the talent to sing so beautifully. And he gave each of us something special of him. Something special of him, something that's unique to each one of us. God did that for us. Ponder on that. God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, became a little baby so that us, the human being, can become like God and behold his glory. Thank you for being here tonight. Have a Merry Christmas. May God bring us back next year with health and with happiness, you and your families. May we come and stand here again next year and enjoy this beautiful feast. God bless you.